we're going to estimate, we're estimating square roots, okay? So what you're going to do is we're used to perfect square roots. Perfect square roots are anything that you can take the square root of and it becomes a whole number. So like the square root of 4 is going to be positive or negative 2 because it could be either or. All right, let's look at your notes. It says, without a calculator, look at the square root and realize that it is a non-perfect square root. So I want you to put your finger on that where it says on your notes. Number one, without a calculator, look at the square root, realize it's not a perfect square root. Is the square root of four, four a perfect square root? No. No, it's not, because the square root of four is what? Two. Two. So you're going to draw a tree and decide what two whole numbers the non-perfect square root sits between. Okay, you're going to decide when they give you a square root, you're going to look at it and you're going to say, hey, is this going to be a real square root? Like, is it perfect? The square root of 36, is that perfect? Uh, yeah. Yeah, because it's a whole number and it's 6. It's positive or negative 6? Positive. Oh, well, it could be either, remember? Yeah. Okay, so we have, we have the square root of 53. Is the square root of 53 a pot, like, is it a regular? Is no, it a, not a it's not a perfect square root. So what do we do? Um, you do what times what equals? So you figure out, you figure out what two perfect square root is that between, okay? It is between 64, right? And it is between what? So 64, the square root, is what, 8? And what comes before 8? 7. 7. So then the, obviously the other square root would be? 49. Good job. You are some smart kids. So it's between 7. The answer for this is between 7 and 8. So is 53 closer to 49 or 64? 49. 49. Good. All right, let's do the next one. The next one is kind of hard. It's 673. Okay. The next one, 673. We didn't go that far, right? But we're supposed to do it without a calculator. So if we use the calculator, then 673, the, the closest that we would get would be 19, is that what you're saying? Okay, so 6. We need something closer, right? Thirty times thirty ninety. Nine hundred. Nine hundred. Oh, let's say ninety. Let's say ninety. Something closer would be. It said thirty times thirty on the test, and I got ninety, and it said right. It said ninety. It would be close to twenty-five. Okay, because twenty-five times twenty-five is going to give you six twenty-five. Okay. So yes, ma'am. So it would be between twenty-five. So six twenty-five. I'm sorry. Square root of six twenty-five and the square root of which equals twenty-five. I'm sorry. If you can see this. And so it would be between twenty-five and twenty-six. Okay. And that's the square root of 676. All right, the next one, the square root of 9. The square root of 9 is a? It's 3. I see myself. The square root of 9 is 3, right? Yes. Okay, the square root of 9 is 3. So is that perfect? Yeah. Yep. So we're good with that. We don't have to estimate. If it's a perfect square root, it's easy, right? Yep. 
It's a whole number. What about the square root of 66? Uh, 278. It would be between the square root of 49, which is what? 7. seven and the square root of 64, which is 8. So our answer for the square root of 66, yes. Oh, you're right. You're right. She's right because 64 is going to be, we're going to go back up there. So 64, right? And the square root of 64 is 8, and then the square root of 81 is 9. So it's going to be closer to 8. All right, sometimes we have these little square roots that don't have them finished. So you can, like, finish it. It looks like a little check mark, okay? The square root of 35 is between what two perfect squares? 5 times 6. So 25 is 30. So 25. What's the other one? 40. 40 is not a perfect square 36. root. 30, 36. Good. So the answer for the square root of 35 is between 5 and 6. Good. All right, next one. 127. Okay. 127 is between the perfect square root of 121. Which is 11 and 144 is 12. So the answer for the square root of 127 is between 11 and 12. So it would be like 11 point something. All right, next we have 58. Is there a perfect square root? And I'm going to come over here and I'm running out of room, so I'm going to draw it right here. Is there a perfect square root for these? Square root of 58? No. No. So it's going to be between the square root of 49, which is 7, and what else? 64. 64. Good job. 7 and 8. And it's going to be negative because we got that negative. We just have to drag the negative sign down like I did right here. And the square root of 2. Oh, 1. You would think it would be 1, right? But the square root of 2 is not really a square root. It's a, it's, you can't, because like the square root of 1 is 1, right? Yeah. So we know that the square root of 2 is between the square root of 1 and the square root of 4. Because those are our perfect square roots. So we have the square root of 1, which is 1, and the square root of 4, which is what? 2. 2. So it's 1... between 1 and 2, right? Okay, so dealing with non-perfect square roots, okay? It's not, it's not a whole lot of fun estimating where it lies between two integers, but simplifying non-perfect square roots can be fun in order to simplify the form of the square root, okay? Be sure to look for the factors that are perfect squares. We're kind of with numbers that are perfect squares that are, bless you. We're coming up with numbers that are perfect squares that are between here, okay? The two perfect squares that are between 98 would be something like the square root of, you'd make a little tree, and then you would say, okay, Let's see, the square root of 100 is 10, right? And the square root of 81 is 9. So the square root of 98, that number 98 is between that number 81 and 100, right? Is that number 98 closer to 81 or closer to 10? To 10, okay? So if you had to make an estimate, your number is between these two, right? And if you had to make an estimate, a good estimate would probably be like 9.8, okay? And then eventually we'll be able to check that in the calculator.
Okay? So look at number two. Number two. Number two, you have the square root of 27. Okay? Is, tw is the square root of 27 a perfect square root? No. no. What two perfect square roots is it between? Square root of 25 and the square root of 36. Okay? Those are your perfect square roots. What's the square root of 25? 5. What's the square root of 36? 6. Good. Okay, 27, is it closer to, is, is 27 closer to 25 or 36? It's closer to 25, so I'm going to, if I'm going to estimate it, I'm going to estimate something like 5 point what? 2 or 3, something like that. Okay. All right, number 3, square root of 48. We know our perfect squares. So we know square root of 48 is not a perfect square. So what is two perfect squares that are between 48? Seven, or no, first one six. And the, so seven, you did it, you did it the way that you can do it. So 40, basically it wants you to know the integers it's between. So the square root of 49 is seven, right? So the other, the square root that makes 6 is what? 30. 30. 36. Okay, so 36. So our answer is going to be between 6 and 7. Is 48 closer to 36 or 49? 49. So a close estimate would be what? What? 6.9. All right, 63. The square root of 63. What two perfect square roots is that between? So the square root of, I heard 8 and 9. The square and the square root of 64 is 8, and the square root of 9 is 81. So is that correct? Is 63? Uh-uh. That's not correct. So it needs to be. It needs to be somewhere between those. So 64 and 49. But it's going to be closer to what? So it's going to be like 7.8, right? All right, the square root of 72. What two perfect square roots is that between? Square root of... Square root of 81, right? So that's 9, and then, so 61, 64, and what else? 81. So the square root of 72 is going to be between 8 and 9. Is 72 closer to 64 or 81? 64. So it's going to be closer, so a good estimate would be like 8.4, okay? The square root of 80. Man, 80 looks like a good number that would be a perfect square root, but is it a perfect square root? No. no. Okay. It's not a perfect square root. So if it's not a perfect square root, then what? Find the two perfect squares. So 81 is going to be one of them, and 64 is going to be the other one. It's closer to what? 81. So it's going to be like 8.9. Good job. All right, the square root of 54. The square root of 54, what two perfect squares? 49 and 64, right? So 7 and 8. 
Is 54, is it closer to 49 or 64? Forty-nine, so it would be closer to seven. So a good estimate for it would be seven point seven point what three. Okay. All right. What about the square root of one seventy-five? We know our perfect square. So what about the square root of one ninety-six? That's fourteen, right? Okay, so 13 is the square root of 169. So our answer, which is, is 175 closer to 169 or 196? 169. So it's going to be 13 point something, 4 maybe? All right, number 9. 600, this is getting big. All right, I know 24 and 25. So I know from calculating this before, 25 times 25 is 625. 24 times 24 is 576. So the square root of, and you guys won't have hard ones like this, so don't, don't be scared. So 576 and the square root of 625. So that's going to be between 24 and 25. My handwriting's getting a mess. Okay, so which one? 600 is closer to what? 24. So 24 point what would be a good estimate? 5? Okay, we can do four. We're going to we're going to check them later. All right, what about the square root of 9 or 90, sorry? Let's just cross one of these out because look, look how many 90s we have. So, square root of 81 obviously, right? And the square root of what? 100. So, 9 and 10. So what would it be closer to? Uh, nine. So it's 10 away from 100, but then 9 away from 81. So it's going to be closer to 9. So probably 9.4 maybe. All right, and then the square root of 75, that's not a perfect square. So it's going to be close to 64. And what else? 81 and 64. So you should be able to start doing this where you guys won't have to write the square root part. The square root part is what I circled right here, the little tree, because you should just be able to see in your heads, okay, it's between the integers of 8 and 9. It's between the integer of, um, you know, 5 and 6, okay? So what I want for you to do is I want you to get a calculator, and I want to check this. Okay, I want to see how close we are. Okay, so right now we all have calculators, and we're going to check ourselves. We are going to check ourselves to see if, can I take this answer 9.8 times 9.8, and can I get the square root of, or can I get 98? So when you do 9.8, times 9.8, you come up with the square root of, not, you, you come up with 96. That is okay. You can have a lower number, but you can't have a higher number. So our estimate is okay. And you can also check your estimate by doing this. So in your calculators, this is what I want you to do. Our calculators, you can go to the square root button, you would hit, like at the top. This is what your calculator looks like, right? At the top, there's this little button that's green, it says and it says second. So I want you guys to hit second, and then go down, and hit the squ X squared button, okay? 
And I'm go I want you guys literally in your little blanks right here, it's going to say square root. And I want you to put, what did we have, 98? I want you to put 98. And then I want you to put enter. Okay? So enter. Okay? It says something crazy. It says if I put 98 in there and I hit enter, it says 7 to the square root of 2. Okay? That is, that's a simplified version. So there's another button before, there's another button before you can actually push. So there's a button right here. See, enter. Push that button, those two arrows. Push it. When you push those two arrow buttons, okay? See the arrows? They go like this and like this. Okay, it did give you the answer of seven square roots of two. Now it gives you a decimal answer. What's the decimal answer? 9.8.9 .9 something. Now, does this answer look like what we got over here? Does it look like what we got over here? Yes. yes. Okay, so now you know how to do it both ways. So let, go through and check. I want you to check um, 1 through 12. I want you to go through and check and make sure that, that it comes out right. So number 2, number 2, 5.2 times 5.2. Okay, 5.2 times 5.2. Who has that? 27.04. 27.04. Is that okay? Yes. Yes. No. It went over. It went four points over. So if it says, so what should I do with this? I should lower it. Because this is not okay. Whenever I do 5.2 times 5.2, it gave me what? 27.02. So now I need to drop this down. This needs to be what? 5.1. And you get 26 point, 20, and that's okay because it's lower, right? All right, let's check three. Help me check three. 6.9 times 6.9. 47.61. Are we good with that? Okay, we're good with that. Let's do, let's check, um... 7.8 times 7.8. 60.84. Are we good with that? Yes. Let's see if we could do better. Because I did 7.8 and 7.8, right? Go in your calculators and check. Let's check ourselves. Hit second square root and type in 63. Okay? And then push those little arrow keys. I could have done what, guys? What would have been better? 7.9. So I could have done 7.9. But then you got to check yourself because 7.9 times 7.9, is that going to be under 63? Yep. Okay. So keep going. Keep checking yourself to make sure you're good. So 8 point, so number 5, 8.4 times 8.4. What do we get? Are we good? Yes. yes. Number six, 8.9 times 8.9. Are we good? Yes. We got 79. Good. Um, what is this? 7.3 times 7.3. We got 53. Are we good? Yes. Okay. We're on number eight now. 13.4 times 13.4. Are we okay with that one? No, we messed that one up. Let's try 13, let's try 13.3 times 13.3. Are we good now? No, we're not good. We're still over. 13.2, Yeah, 13.2. Okay, that works. All right, let's do, let's start number nine. 24 times, 24.4 times 24.4. Are we good? 
We could do better, but we're good. 9.4 times 9.4, this is number 11. Are we good? We could go more, but we're good. We could go higher. Let's try to do, go second square root, do 90. What would we get? I got 9.48. All right, let's try 75. 8.5 times 8.5. 72. Are we good? Yeah, but we can go higher. Okay. No, because if we put 75 in there, we would have 8. Put, well, no, she's right, because we could have put 8.6, and we still would have been under. We, we still would have been under that 75. Okay, now we need to, um, you have to m simplify square roots with variables. This is when you got A, B, C, 1, 2, like all, all that. A, B, C's with your 1, 2, 3's. You got X and Y's. This says that you're going to divide the, if it's an even exponent. You guys know what even numbers are, right? Yes. You are going to divide the exponent by 2. That answer becomes the exponent on the outside. Circle outside. Because you're putting that bad boy outside, okay? Okay, so let's look at this example, okay? This example is the square root of, si like, it's the square root of x to the 6th power, right? What's 6 divided by 2? Three, so that's why there's x to the third power. Okay, look at this one. X square root of x ten and the square root of y y to the eighth power. What's ten divided by two? Five. Five. What's eight divided by two? Four. Four. Okay. So now look at look at these little examples we have over here. All we have to do is what, guys? Divide by 2 because they're even. You divide by 2 when they are what? Even. even. Say it again. Even. 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 You divide by 2. All right, let's do these real quick. Divide by 2. What do, what do you get for your answer? X, X squared and then, and then just Y, right? Yeah. Okay, the next one, Bryson, you get A what? Divide by 2, babe. Eight. B. <clears throat> What's B? Fifteen. Fifteen. Good job, guys. All right, divide by two all of these. What do you get? Five. X five. X five. What else, Jeff? Ten. Ten. And then Z and two. Z and two. Okay, and then the, with the odd exponents, you're going to divide the exponents by two, and that answer becomes the exponent on the outside still. But the remainder is the exponent in the radicand, okay? And because this is such a mess down here, I'm going to rewrite it. Okay, guys, we're almost done. Um, I just wanted to make sure that you were aware that we're still dividing the exponent by 2, which is this exponent. But instead um, of just dividing it, and leaving it alone, it doesn't just divide evenly. So that extra number has to come out. So the answer becomes the exponent on the outside of the radical. So if you take this 3 and you divide it by 2, okay, you'll still have 1 left. So you'll have x to the first power and then you'll have an x left over. Okay, if we did another example, let's say we did x to the 11th power and y to the 17th power. Okay, if we divide these by 2, right, we are still going to have an x, sorry, and a y left over because these are odd, okay? So we would have we would have that x and then we'd have the x to the fifth because we would have to divide by two and then that extra one stays inside. 
and then we would divide this by 2 and then that would give us y to the 8th but then we still have this one that stays inside because if you look 8 times 2 gives you 16 and then you have this other y which gives you 17 so that's how you get that y to the 17th power so you're just dividing so another one would be x to the ninth y to the second and z to the eighth so you would just divide these by two and then whatever is left over stays inside so you would have 9 divided by 2 okay 9 divided by 2 you would leave the X I'm sorry I'm writing this incorrectly you would leave the X inside but then you could put the pairs of X's which you have four pairs okay so times 2 that would give you an 8 and then you have one left over and then you would also have the y so you would do y you divide the y and the y um, and then you wouldn't have anything left and then you would do except for that y and then you would do z to the fourth power Okay, and then since that is going to give you an even exponent, you can take it out of the radical, so this radical sign. You only keep the radical, the radical sign if it's an odd, okay? If it's even, it comes out. So any more questions, just come and ask me and I can help you. But I hope that I hope that this estimating square roots has helped you today.